Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach, and this is Dadvice TV Live. Now, if you're new, welcome. It's great to have you here. You're going to love this channel. You're going to love the co host that I bring on, especially the one we have tonight, which, oops, I forgot to grab his book. Today's co host is the author of Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease. But before we get to that, if you are new, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is James. I'm a kidney patient and I have gone through stage five, stage four, and now I'm doing strong in stage three, all from diet and lifestyle changes. Stop doing all the things that were hurting my kidneys, focusing on things that were good for my heart, good for my health. And as I improved my overall health, so did my labs. And there's a little bit of luck in there. But tonight, we're going to be talking about one of the most important things that a kidney patient has control over and that you can make choices that directly impact your health. That is your diet. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, our co-host tonight is the author of Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease, Dr. Rosansky. You guys love him. He's always got great information when he volunteers an hour of his time to come here every other Monday and talk to us. And you guys know what he does at the very end of his uh, visits here? He answers questions from the audience. So if you've got questions, go ahead and post them down below. And if we don't get to them during the show, at the end, we go back and we look at questions that we might have missed so that he can answer those. Now, let's go ahead and let's introduce Dr. Rosansky, the author of Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease, so we can jump right in to today's topic because it is going to be huge. Hey there, Doc. How you doing? I'm good, James. I'm good. Yeah, we're going to take a deep dive into uh, diets and the low-carb diet. You want me to introduce myself, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm a for kidney. those that are new, yeah. so they know why what you say is important and that they should be listening to you, not Dr. Google and Nurse Facebook. Yeah, well, I'm a kidney doctor with over 50 years of clinical practice, over 40 years taking care of kidney patients. Um, I also have taken care of a large uh, number of diabetic patients. Uh, I have written a lot of academic papers, and um, a lot of them have gotten a pretty wide acclaim, and, and uh, especially in the area of when to start dialysis. I wrote this book because I know a lot of you folks are very worried about your kidney disease, and I think that I've, I've alleviated a lot of your anxieties, and uh, also I want to be sure that folks who are anywhere near dialysis read my book so you don't go on dialysis too early. A lot of folks are being put on dialysis way too early. My book will tell you why it's not a good idea and give you stuff to bring to your doctor. And uh, tonight we're gonna start out on, I think it's gonna be a two-part session. Uh, we're gonna talk uh, about um, diets, but we're gonna focus on low-carb diet. But before we really dig into the low-carb diet, I'm gonna talk about a lot of the diet fads, a lot of fun here. And uh, I think a lot of you have heard about the fads, but I'm gonna give you the science-backed information and what really matters uh, in the area of diet. So first awesome, of all- there's all sorts of fads out there and a lot of the Facebook groups just are repeating stuff that when I see it, I cringe because I know how wrong the information they're promoting is. Yeah, the information I'm giving you is information that's backed by publications, peer-reviewed publications. And I try my best to sort through stuff that is not really relevant and try to give you the, the real hardcore facts. So first of all, as we talked about last time, there is a cure for those of you who are pre-diabetes. Uh, and, and that is, uh, and, and the way to prevent diabetes and the bad outcomes from blood vessel disease, which is one of the main reasons, James and I just discussed this, that you should know if you've got CKD, early stage CKD especially, and later stage CKD. They all, diabetes, CKD, it raises your risk of getting problems with hardening of the arteries. That's what the main thing you guys need to focus on and how to decrease that risk. And one of the components of that risk is of diet. Of course, the other component is uh, is health, healthy eating 
and exercise. Today we're going to focus on the uh, diet portion. Um, and there's a lot of diets to lose weight. And if you can lose weight, you can prevent yourself from going to from prediabetes to diabetes. You can also decrease your risk of death from hardening of the arteries. Now, what about uh, diabetes and obesity in your kidneys? Well, both diabetes and obesity can accelerate a, the, your loss of kidney function. So, um, and that's why anyone with CKD who's overweight should be interested in trying to lose weight. Because there's- now, Quick question here. Go ahead. What do you classify as obesity? Where, where do you put it? Okay, so I frankly th find that to be a exercise in futility. Here, here's the reason why. There's a lot of ways to measure it. BMI is good. I think you could look at your BMI, which is you can calculate it. You can go online and calculate it. I think the BMI is a reasonable approximation of who, who is obese and who is not. You know, good BMI is somewhere around 25. A lot of people have BMIs 28 to 30. But here's the deal. You may be a person that you can grab um, very little fat and your BMI may be high. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that you're real obese. But I think in general, healthy eating is going to be for everybody. And low-carb diets, which we're going to get to in detail next session, what they are and how to do it, I think is a good idea for everyone. And just to tell you about weight and kidney disease, there have been large studies that are called meta-analyses. They look at all the studies. There, there's one done in 2009, 12, and 13. And the studies conclude that significant weight loss can help improve your kidney number, and it can help decrease the amount of protein you're spilling. So I think it's worthwhile to not get obsessed with your weight, but try to eat healthy, and, and if you are overweight, to try to get your weight down. Now, what about all the options for diets? There's all kinds of diet fads, and clearly uh, not one size will fit everybody. And um, here's an important lesson, which I found fascinating. Of 48 studies that looked at all the ranges of diets that we're going to talk about tonight, guess what? After a year, everybody lost about the same amount of weight. There is no magic with any of these diets. But that's not what's important. What's important is the health benefits of a diet. And what you eat is clearly going to be most important to your health. That's, that could be even secondary to how much weight you lose. But you want to try to get your weight down if you're overweight. Um, in my mind... A lot of these diets are so unpleasant that they're useless. I mean, if exactly. you got a diet, if you can't stick to it, it's useless. It doesn't matter how well it works. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you can use all kinds of diets to decrease your weight, to help your diabetes, to help your kidneys. Uh, but the question is, you want a diet with long-term health benefits. And the stuff you eat can mean a lot in terms of your health. And we're going to get into that. And the main thing about low-carb diets, which I think is the beauty of the low-carb diet, it is user-friendly. It's an easy diet, and it's a good diet for longer life and one that you're going to stick to. So I am pretty convinced that that is the diet for most of you to consider. Let's run down some of the fad diets. You guys probably heard of the Atkins diet. Mm -hmm. Popularized See it in the store, <laughs> Atkins food. Well, we're going we're gonna to break that one right down. Atkins Diet, 1990 came out, and it's the low-carb, high-fat diet. So this diet basically is blaming uh, the low-fat, high-carb diet as the culprit for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Now, Atkins got it partly right, but he got it a lot wrong. <laughs> uh, the problem with the diet is they don't say, think you need a knock off meat intake or get rid of the extra fat on meats, which is not correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Atkins diet, which uh, James just mentioned, has all kinds of commercial products. And these commercial products are processed foods that are poisons. 
They are absolutely the wrong thing to eat if you want to eat healthy. Don't fall for the Atkins shakes, bars, processed foods that have all kinds of sugars and artificial sweeteners in it. That's not going to be good for your health. And um, a lot of the foods that we eat are processed foods. Mm -hmm. Processed meaning it's it's either um, in some way they're prepared by freezing, canning, or baking. But a lot of these processed foods have all kinds of stuff in it. You look at the list of these artificial ingredients, which are not good for your health, but they help the shelf life of the particular product. It helps uh, them make more money at your cost of your health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this diet, they want you to be on a low-fat diet, which is ridiculous uh, how low they want the fat in your diet to be. And actually, the low-fat can be on... on uh, unhealthy um i'm sorry they, they want I'm, I'm 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 confusing myself james <laughs> time out the there's, atkins there's so diet to, to I, i'm, I'm confusing it with ornish atkins is low carb high fat sorry correct myself okay they go real low on the carbs which is not necessary and we're going to get into that in a minute this diet is hard to follow and, uh, and I don't uh, at all agree with the high fat. I agree with the emphasis on low carbs and getting away from the uh, processed food and carbs. But why should you eat the processed food and the Atkins uh, yeah. stuff he's selling in the supermarket? Makes no sense to me. The next diet is the Ornish diet. We got all these guys' names. Now, I've never heard of that one. Well, this is because you're, you're too young. It was popularized okay. in the 80s. <laughs> I like that. I'm too young. I don't hear now, that often. <laughs> the Ornish diet emphasizes not just the diet, but exercise and stress reduction. All good. Exercise is all good. Stress reduction is all good. We're not going to get into that tonight, but that's all fine. It, it, that is the low-fat diet, and that's why I got confused. Uh, they want you to have a low-fat, low-refined carbohydrate. So... So both of them, the Atkins and the Ornish, are, are trying to decrease the uh, carbohydrates, um, the refined carbs, the processed carbs. Uh, but Ornish goes down to 10% of your total calories as fats, which is the old way of thinking. And that's the way I was brought up, that you don't want to eat too much fat. I can't tell you how many people would just go crazy about fat, 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 don't eat anything with fat. Oh. Well, well, we're going to learn in a minute that the whole game has changed, folks. The fat is no longer the devil. You know, we eat around half of our diet is fat, and this guy wants you to go down to 10%. This is unnecessary and potentially harmful. How do you like that? It turns out that if you're eating less than 25% of your calories as fat, you, uh, you're not going to decrease your risk of hardening of the arteries, like we used to think. As a matter of fact, the American Heart Association no longer recommends a low-fat diet to prevent hardening of the arteries. I repeat, the American Heart Association no longer recommends low-fat diet uh, to prevent hardening of the arteries. So, and, and here's something else. We discussed this and I'll mention it again. If you've got diabetes, if you've got CKD, you're at a higher risk of these problems with heart attacks, strokes, atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, serious problems. I would recommend for most of you to be on a lipid drug, a statin, to get your LDL below 100. And if you've got high risk, high protein in the urine, bad diabetes with protein in the urine, I would go to 60 on your LDL. So, um, so it's okay to, to you know stay away from the um, uh, the unrefined, the processed carbohydrates. That's all good. And and just to get a quick uh, overview, what does it mean by processing? Well, you have grains that remove the husks. They grind the food. That's what pro it makes it easier to chew, makes them finer, and, and it improves the shelf life. More money. That's that's all about money. But it's removing vitamins, iron, and especially dietary fiber. Exactly. Fiber, fiber is important. You want to get your fiber, and that's why 
these refined carbs are not good. What's an unrefined carb? Very simply, in the fruits and vegetables, the fresh fruits and vegetables. That's what you want to focus on. The grains and the legumes. Legumes is a big word for pea, peas and beans. Chick, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, peanuts, black beans, green beans, lima beans. These are all good. These are all the legumes. Black eyed funny, peas. I, I eat a lot of, of beans. I either make my own hummus or I'll have some, some beans. And a lot of kidney patients in message forums are shocked. They're like, why are you eating beans? The phosphorus isn't as bad because it's natural. And there's fiber and so many other good things in them. It's easy to incorporate them into your diet. And unless you have advanced CKD or unless you're having problems controlling your potassium, which is unusual until you get to stage four and five, less than 30 EGFR and often less than 15, you don't have to worry about the potassium problem in the beans. And the beans are very healthy. Uh, and the thing about eating these things with fiber is uh, they fill you up mm -hmm. and they decrease the amount of calories you want to eat. I've done that. Try when you are ready to get a bag of chips, try to eat some. Uh, my wife makes this garbanzo bean salad with some onions and stuff. It's delicious. A little olive oil. It'll fill you up and you won't want to eat those carbs. Uh, and, of course, fiber, as we said, has all kinds of benefits. Lowers your cholesterol. Lowers your blood sugar. Keeps you from getting constipated. Helps the people with irritable bowel and actually decreases colon cancer. So fiber in these, um, these carbs that are not processed, the unrefined, the ones we just talked about, fruits, vegetables, and the beans, good stuff. How about the paleo diet? Paleo, right? This well, is the I see cave. that all the time at Costco now. <laughs> it's like it seems to be the big fad right now. It's all it's over the, the place. It's nonsense. It's absolute woo woo. It's the caveman diet. First of all, we're not cavemen and women. We do not hunt our food. And we have enormous amounts of choices for food options. We're not living in caves. The paleo diet eliminates unrefined grains which is crazy <laughs> it eliminates the unrefined grains leg legumes and beans which have health benefits now it does avoid which is fine the salty foods crackers that kind of processed food it, it, it avoids those processed foods which is fine but it recommends you to eat a lot of bacon <laughs> eat eat uh uh not low not low fat eating uh, fatty beef from grass-fed cows, expensive and no real benefit other than maybe to, to the, the life of the animal, which is certainly something to consider. Uh, and, and with other fad diets, this diet limits your choices immensely. It's expensive, especially if you try to buy the grass-fed beef, and, and it insists on organic foods, which are also expensive. No point... So in the paleo diet, absolutely a pointless diet. Don't waste your time. What about the famous vegan diet? Now, vegans are fine. I'm all for vegan folks. Um, vegans are going to eat the kind of carbs that are energy dense, the fruits, the vegetables, the legumes. Uh, no foods from animals, which can be a problem. No eggs, cheese, no milk, no honey, uh, and uh, no gelatin, which I don't know if you guys know why no gelatin. It's made from animal bones. All that jello you're eating comes from animal bones. I learned that many years Luckily, ago. Luckily, I hate jello. <laughs> <laughs> the diet is a recipe for vitamin deficiency and protein deficiency. In my mind, not a good plan. You get low calcium problems, low omega-3 fatty acids that you find in good fats. No B12 because you got to get that from meat and that can affect your nervous system. Um, and uh, the vegan diet, you can have uh, protein problems, 
muscle wasting problems, and you can have problems with your bones, osteoporosis. Uh, a lot of people on a vegan diet feel weak. They can get constipated. And they're very restrictive. And guess what? Here's what happens. People say, I'm going to go on a vegan diet, no meat. Well, when they get hungry, guess what they do? They, they go for the processed carbs, the worst yeah. possible thing that they're you can eat. They're carb loading. Yeah, so the vegan diet, I don't see it as having great advantages. Uh, it may be good for the environment, and I'm not going to you know, minimize that, but I don't recommend it for people who want to lose weight and be healthy. What about the famous keto diet? There we go. It's considered that, a, a low carb, but I consider it extreme low carb. It is my least favorite diet. Least favorite diet. Why? It is extremely low in carbs, less than 5% of your daily carbs, maybe a slice of bread. It's absurd. We, and most people on average <laughs> are eating half their calories as carbs, which is not good. Uh, so when you cut carbs, your body will burn the products of fat uh, digestion, fatty acids and ketones. Uh, and because of uh, people feel less hungry, because fatty foods take a longer time to break down, and since it's very low in carbs, you will lose weight. Mm -hmm. No question about that. But to me, unless you're a pediatric patient with seizures, <laughs> I seen which is indicated for that particular subgroup of people, I don't see it for any adults, and the risks outweigh the benefits. And let's get into them. <clears throat> um, you got all kinds of food restrictions, and yes, you can lose weight in the short term, and this may be one of the worst diets for the yo-yo effect. You can lose a lot of weight quickly, and then guess what? Most people gain it back just as quickly. It's just a hard, pain-in-the-neck diet to maintain. Yeah, and, so I lost quite a bit of weight on a version of a keto diet, but my labs got out of whack. My doctor didn't like it for my heart, and I, I want to blame COVID, but all that weight has come back. <laughs> Over well, the last let me tell you. Let me so. tell you something. Yeah, James, it is dangerous to have a yo-yo effect on weight loss. People whose weight goes up and down, you know, especially with these diets that give you the rapid weight loss, have shorter lifespans. So you don't want to be dropping weight and gaining weight and dropping weight and gaining weight. That's not a good diet. And. Uh, you are not going to get essential vitamins and fiber because you need those carbs. Those complex carbs have fiber in it, and they have heart benefits, which we talked about, and colon cancer benefits, etc. A lot of folks on keto diets, they feel f foggy. They feel tired. Why is that? Your brain needs sugar from the healthy carbs to function. And without them, people feel confused. They get irritable. And a lot of people have severe constipation, no fiber. They get real constipated, and they can get dehydrated. You can get kidney stones with this diet. You can also get thin bones, osteoporosis. You can also get high LDL, increase your bad cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And the acids that build up from the ketones on this diet and the high-protein diet, this is absolutely a no-no for kidney disease. You don't want to be on this crazy, low, low-carb diet. Low-carb is fine. We're going to get into it. But ketogenic carb, I am against. I see no point to it. The one diet that's endorsed, and I've endorsed it, I mentioned it in my book, and it's the a diet that's globally ranked as one of the best is the so-called Mediterranean diet. And this diet makes a lot of sense. It is plant-based, lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains. We talked about the beans, the nuts, the legumes, all the various beans we just mentioned. Lots of olive oil, lots of flavorful herbs and spices. They recommend eating fish and seafood a couple times a week, which I like. Mm -hmm. uh, you can eat chicken 
eggs, cheese, yogurt in moderation. They let you have sweets and red meat on occasion. Um, now, as opposed to the other fad diets, it's one diet you can stick with. And this is a relatively easy to, diet to stick with. I don't think it's as easy as a low-carb diet that I'm going to tell you about. But it is easy to stick with. And it emphasizes your overall life pattern, including wine, a glass of wine. But don't think that a glass of wine means you can have a bunch of drinks because alcohol is loaded with carbs and most mixed drinks are very high in calories. Not a good idea. Glass of red wine, maybe. The main downside to this diet, it's not really designed for weight loss and it could be costly. It is easy to follow, but if you're looking for weight loss, you probably want to do the low carb diet that we're going to discuss. Now, what about folks say, hey, I hear that intermittent fasting, I'm going to fast one day or two days out of the month or whatever, and they say, oh, that's going to be real good for me and my health. Here's what the evidence shows. It has not been shown to benefit you over the long term. You do just as well, if not better, by just decreasing your calories on a consistent basis, not fasting. And this intermittent fasting can be dangerous if you're diabetic, especially if you're on blood sugar medicines, it can be very, very dangerous. Now, here's one thing that I do recommend. It makes sense to eat most of your calories early. A lot of folks wait to eat their calories in the evening and then they snack at bedtime. If you eat your calories early and try not to eat much before bedtime, you're going to wind up eating less calories and be healthier. What about organic foods? Is there any reason to go to the supermarket and buy more expensive organic foods? Mm -hmm. There is a reason to use organic foods and that is for the planet to promote biodiversity, meaning to get more climates, to do sustained agriculture, which is a whole nother discussion, which is good for the planet. Less pesticides is good for the planet. But there hasn't been any good evidence that organic foods are going to make you any healthier. And organic foods are not zero pesticides. Organic foods may decrease your risk of allergies, and it may decrease the incidence of obesity, but the problem with really deciding if organic foods are really beneficial is that a lot of the folks, as you'd imagine, who eat organic also have healthy lifestyles. So the pesticides, I would say, wash your fruit. I don't think you have to buy organic fruits and vegetables. There's been no evidence that um, eating organic uh, animal products has any health benefit. There is a overall massive problem with antibiotics in animals, which we're not going to get into tonight. So that's something related to not having, to eating organic meat that's not, your animals don't get the antibiotics. Not enough time tonight to discuss. But um, no, I don't see any need to spend the extra money. Just wash off your fruits and vegetables. Yeah, and COVID, yeah. I think, has yeah. got most of us into washing our fruits and vegetables. We bring them in. So hopefully most of us now have that good habit down and not just grabbing it right out of the bag and eating it. So why was Dr. Ornish so wrong pushing that 10% fat diet and the low, his, his low-fat, high-protein diet? Okay. So... It's not so much that the carbs and the calories make you fat. It's really the empty carbs, all of those processed foods that we eat that promote fat storage. How do you get fat? You get fat when you eat a carb which produces insulin and the insulin leads to storage of fat in your body. And the interesting thing is if you look at a gram of fat, it has nine calories per gram, right? A gram of protein and a gram of carbs have only four calories per gram. So you would think that eating fat is going to give you more calories, make you fatter. That is absolutely wrong. <laughs> People lose more weight on low-carb, high-fat diets 
than they lose on low-fat diets. And, um, and it was thought that if you increase fat in your diet, this is the old way of thinking, uh, as part of a low-carb diet, you're going to mess up your cholesterol and increase your heart disease. You're going to get a heart attack from that and the other atherosclerosis complications. This old conventional wisdom was wrong, folks. It was wrong. Research has shown that although fats can raise your cholesterol, there's no relationship between the diet that you're eating and death from heart and blood vessel disease from the atherosclerosis problems. But you got to eat healthy, fa healthy fats. Now, here's what happens on a low-carb diet. The low-carb diet gives you lower triglycerides. The triglycerides are the fats in the, uh, f from the food. The food that we eat are broken down. Fats are broken down into triglycerides. That's the breakdown product. And that's what's in your blood. And um, the low-carb diet will lower those triglycerides, which gets less fat deposited. Uh, the low-carb diet is the best diet to raise your HDL, the good cholesterol, as long as you're eating healthy fats. So this has been studied extensively. I'll mention a couple of the uh, studies. One study, they looked at folks who were on a Mediterranean diet. They ate lots of vegetables um, uh, and fat for five years. They lost more weight than the folks told to eat low fat. So there's a lot of evidence that eating fat, as long as you're eating the right fats, so we'll get into them in a minute, is going to get you to lose weight more quickly. And there's another study where folks could eat a high-fat diet, and guess what? They reduced their risk of heart disease by 30% compared to those on a low-fat diet. Just the opposite of what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. So the American Heart Association, current recommendations that we eat about a third of our calories as fat. But importantly, very little of it should be saturated fat and no trans fat. And we're going to get into that in a minute. The trans fat is the bad stuff that raises your LDL and lowers your HDL. And I'm going to guess that's, that's what's in bacon. <laughs> hell yeah. And that's, and that's what all the fried foods, all the fast foods, and that's what is going to give you the heart disease, the heart attacks. Uh, tr the trans fat is the worst. You got to read labels, not so much for calories. And as you're going to learn, low-carb diet, you don't have to count calories. That's the beauty of it. It's the beauty of it. You're eating roughly about a third of your meal is fat, a third is carbs, and a third is protein. We're going to get into how simple it is, and we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of it on our next Advice TV talk. Um, so, so the trans fats that increase your risk of heart attacks and strokes, uh, contrast that with the, what are the healthy fats? The healthy fats, the good fats, the omega-3 fats, you find them in tuna, you find them in olive oil, you find them in, in seeds, um, you find them in other fish, salmon, trout, herring. Fish are generally a, a good source of the, of the good fats. In plants, you see them in avocados, walnuts, olives. And here's a quick thing to remember. If you want to know which kind of oils have the bad fats and which kind of oils have the good fats. Well, the bad fats, think of being in the tropics, right? The bad fats are coconut, coconut oil, cocoa Ooh. butter, palm that oil. That coconut oil is pushed on the keto diet. Palm MCT. kernel oil. I'm telling you, you got to be careful with the diets that are giving you the dangerous foods. It's not going crazy with calories or going crazy with low carbs. It's eating the good foods in a balanced way. You won't have to obsess with carbs. And we'll get into all this next talk, the nuts and bolts. So trans fats are almost everywhere. You find them in the fried foods. You find them in the pastries. You find them in baked goods. 
You find them in the pizza dough, pie crusts, donuts, cookies, muffins, crackers, and look on the package for partially <laughs> hydrogenated oils. These are the things in fast foods, and they are really bad for you. You want to stay away from the from the partially hydrogenated oils, and you want to stay away from the uh, the dangerous um, uh, fats. So, um, what about um, the benefits of a low carb diet? Why should anyone want to think about getting on a low carb diet? First of all, if you're pre-diabetic, if you're worried about becoming a diabetic, if you've got a family history of diabetes, here's the deal. What's the deal with diabetes? Either you don't produce enough insulin, which is type 1 diabetes, and some type 2s will eventually not produce enough insulin, uh, or your body's resistant to the insulin, the insulin resistance. Either way, eating a lot of carbs is going to play a role in getting type 2 diabetes. And more importantly, if you are diabetic and you want to keep your sugar under control, the only way to do it is, is low carb. And, and if you keep your sugar under control, you're going to help prevent the complications of diabetes, uh, of which kidney disease, of course, is an important one that every one of you want to prevent. Now, quick question now, there. Yeah, yeah. If someone is type 1, is low carb helpful? Absolutely. That's critical. It is critical. It is critical. And um, we're going to get into just how easy it is to have a low carb diet. But if you are on insulin, you are going to be 100% tuned in to your carbs. Because eating carbs can just push that sugar way up. And then you're going to have sugars that are going to go up and down quickly, and that's really bad for you. So type 1s especially are going to be really careful about their carbohydrate intake. But all of us need to be careful about carbohydrate intake for the long-term health benefits and to help folks lose weight in an easy way, in a way that you can stick to. So um, here's the deal. Uh so the, um, the fats that you eat in, in a low-carb diet, um, well, well here's, oh, okay, let me get back. So if you are eating the processed carbs, what happens to you? And it's happened to all of us. You can eat and eat and eat, but after a while you get hungrier. <laughs> and, and if you're on a low-carb diet and you're eating, uh, you know, processed carbs or whatever your low calorie intake is, you're not eating much fat, um, your metabolism is going to slow down and uh, you're going to put the weight back on, uh, especially uh, if you're eating processed carbs and, um, and you're not eating the healthy fats. If you eat real food, if you eat the natural foods, the plants, the vegetables, the high fiber foods, they're very satisfying and you will not want to eat as much. Uh, you'll eat a lot less of the natural carbohydrates, the legumes, the beans, uh, the vegetables, than you will the process. The process just, you eat them and you're hungry in five minutes, you want to eat more. And if you eat the right balance, guess what? Your body's going to do the rest. You're not going to have to obsess on how many calories this thing had or weighing your food or some other craziness. Um, and if you reduce the carbs in your diet, it will help, especially if you're only eating um, the, the good carbs, you're going to reduce your appetite. And people that are on low-carb diet, they find they can eat until they're full and shed a lot of extra weight. And this weight comes off pretty quickly. It can come off easily in the first six months of the diet. 
And here's the most important thing. It's a diet you can stick to. It's a diet that you won't have this yo-yo effect where you would like in some of the other diets we talked about. And, uh, and it's got the added benefit uh, that you're not going to have to count calories. So um, we're going to answer some of your questions. And just to kind of before we get into it, um, the next time I'm going to get together with you folks, I get, it'll be in two weeks, I'm going to talk about the nuts and bolts of the low-carb diet. I'm going to give you a lot of tricks to help you stay on the diet. And uh, I'm going to give you some things to help with some of the emotional problems a lot of folks have with emotional eating and stuff like that. And uh, give you some real good pointers on how to be successful at using a low-carb diet. And then we're going to also focus next time, uh, James, on low carbs and CKD. We're going to specifically good. get into that for your kidney because I patients. need to do that too. I gotta get rid of the weight that I put on the last year or so. My doctor keeps telling me <laughs> gotta lose weight, so I definitely need to focus on that. So we had a lot of really good questions. Um, Don had asked, "How about extra virgin olive oil, which is one of the ones I use, and canola oil? What are your thoughts on those?" Yeah, so again, any of the non-tropical oils are fine. I don't know that you need to spend the money on the extra or extra or extra version. I think olive oil is fine. So, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you, cooking up, some, some folks, I've actually heard a conversation about this with some uh, experts, some physicians, that not only is the Mediterranean diet uh, important regarding uh, fruits and vegetables but it's the method of cooking with the olive oil that they say may have a health benefit so that's interesting too yeah and, and, and a lot and, of the yeah. food i look at it's it's olive oil they're using to cook and yeah. i love mediterranean food it just tastes yeah, so good very so much tasty, flavor very tasty and and yeah use a lot of spices in your food to get your taste buds stimulated that's the best thing and they don't have calories now here's a question. It's not exactly on topic, but it's That's about fine. it's something great for you to to answer sure. weigh in on. Um, sure. Alice has been approved for a gastric sleeve. What are your thoughts on that for kidney patients? Okay, well I okay I um, don't know a lot about the gastric sleeve. I've got personal experience. It's anecdotal, and um, the success is not great. But good luck with it. I think that um, for morbidly obese people, people whose BMI is in the high 30s, low 40s, um, gastric bypass surgery and not the sleeve is something to consider. And that has enormous success rates. That particular surgical procedure has gotten rid of diabetes for a lot of people, high blood pressure, and in turn may have great benefits for your kidneys. The sleeve per se, I have no information regarding uh, good or bad outcomes, but my anecdotal information is the success rates are not nearly as good as gastric bypass, which by the way has become much more of a routine operation for people that are what they call morbidly obese, really high BMIs, uh, and they've got great success. And that can increase your, your lifespan with that. Yeah, and my mom's Surgery had it. She's had great results. She got off of her insulin shot. She lost a ton of weight. It, it pretty much gave her her life back, um, you know, a second chance at being able to go out and do the things she wanted. Um, Alice also had, or wait, let me see, where is it? What are your views on a low oxalate diet? I don't find any reason to be on a low oxalate diet unless you have calcium oxalate stones. And even there, the low oxalate diet has not even been shown to prevent the stones, if you have calcium oxalate stones, which are the commonest stone, the most important thing for you to do is to drink a lot of water. It's the one 
uh, situation where drinking a lot of water can prevent you from getting stone recurrences. And the other thing that helps uh, recurrence of stones is potassium citrate can keep these stones from forming. Cool. Now, Diana has a bit of a complicated one. She's one of our older audience members, 67, not too old. You know, Diane, I still consider you young. Um, her GFR last November was about 52, glucose 101. Her GFR, it's it's pretty much stayed the same. It's, it's a 51 now. Um, Diane, that's, that's the same. It's going to fluctuate a little bit. Could just be you're slightly dehydrated or we're slightly overhydrated. It's slightly the last time. Um, her doctor told her to lose weight, and she's stage 3A. Should she be worried about where her numbers are, pretty much what she's asking? No, and again, James, we can't repeat this enough times. Um, and I let me, let me digress for a minute talking about diets. I can't help but talk about the low-protein diet. Do not fall for low-protein diet. <coughs> Do not fall for very low-protein diet. Dangerous, not indicated. No evidence that low-protein diet benefits diabetics. Zero. Do not fall for low-protein diet to slow kidney decline. If you are stage 4 with a lot of protein in the urine, that's the one time I would consider a very low-protein diet. <coughs> and James, you're absolutely right. A 50 could be plus or minus 5. One day 45, one day 55, it's the same number. And these testimonials that you're going to see online about people who went on low protein or whatever, whatever the woo-woo was and their kidney number got from 45 to 55, hello, folks, it's the same number. And stage 3A, not to worry. Stage 3A, the only thing that you should focus on is healthy lifestyle, good diet, and exercise. Main yes, thing that you should do to help prevent hardening of the arteries and the bad outcomes from that. Yeah, and, and 67 with a, a GFR in the 50s, that's not that bad. I, as, it, as, well, as we discussed, James, uh, 45 to 60 is probably a normal kidney number for somebody who's around 70 or 75. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Your kidney function number will decline normally with age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see any questions that you want to address that have popped okay. up? Okay. Uh, so somebody says uh, plant-based uh, 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 diet for 20 years, stage four. I think the most important part of this stage four, Amanda, is amazing. Everybody listen to Amanda. 20 years, stage four. Don't let your doctor tell you that you've got a EGFR of you know, stage four is uh, 15 to 30, don't let him say you're going to be on dialysis. Man, is a good case in point, 20 years, and that's not unusual. Please don't let anybody rush you into dialysis or convince you that you're going to have to be on a machine. Now, of course, we talked about, and look in my book, certain situations that will be more prone to lose kidney function more rapidly. And the plant-based diet is fine, Amanda. I would be concerned at some point, maybe when you get down below 15, if your potassium starts going up, uh, that you might want to consider uh, how the fruits and vegetable issue is affecting your potassium. Uh, oh, I got, I got one for you, Doc. Alice yeah. just posted a few moments ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know your answer. Can smoking affect your kidneys? Yeah, so basically... Smoking has had bad effects on everything, including kidney function. And there had, I mean, this is not lots of studies, but there is evidence that stopping smoking could improve your kidney function. Um, so Dawn said, is it best to get most of your protein from fruits, vegetables, a smaller amount, chicken, turkey, or fish? Yeah, so, I mean, basically, um, on the low-carb diet, um, you know, you're, you're okay to eat, you know, uh, chicken, fish, turkey. It's all fine. And we're going to see you don't have to obsess um, where you're getting your protein. And, again, uh, if you're eating the kind of average low-carb diet that we're going to talk to talk about next time, 
you're going to have about a third of your meal that's protein, a third that's fat, and a third that's carbs, and it'll be fine. Um, okay. And then Sally uh, has protein leakage. Yeah. Will eating mm -hmm. less animal protein help with that? That's a common question. No, 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 no. The protein in your diet has not been shown to have a relationship to the protein in your urine. On the other hand, as we said earlier in my talk, there's pretty good evidence that if you lose weight, that may benefit you from not developing kidney disease. And Dawn is absolutely right. Red meat has been connected to people having kidney disease. Get rid of the red meat. It has a connection to kidney disease. Um, but if you, um, um, if you eat uh, a diet, low-carb diet, you lose weight, you may well decrease the protein in your urine and stabilize kidney function. So it's, it's got lots of reasons to try to get on this low-carb diet. Yeah, I just saw a common one that I see a lot about the uh, plant-based burgers. Guys, got to be careful. That stuff is loaded with sodium. You look at one burger, I think it's like 880 milligrams just in the patty itself. And when I used to eat a burger, it was two patties. And then I had yeah. a bun, more sodium. All of a sudden, you had your entire day's worth of sodium in one little plant-based burger that you think is healthy, but it's not. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to run through a lot of these questions. I, um, I think... Look, my one of my kids is uh, has got a job with a startup, which is a plant-based chicken that that she's going to be uh, uh, trying to sell. The only thing I would say about any of these plant-based meats, beyond meats, whether it be chicken or or beef, is that they're going to be a lot of artificial things in them. And generally speaking, you got to be a little concerned about the uh, artificial uh, ingredients in any product. A lot of them are for preservatives and so forth. The less artificial ingredients, the better off you are. The less salt, the better off you are. The less sugars, the better off you are. Look at the labels. That's the main thing that I would advise you to do. Um, and we talked about the good carbs. The good carbs are uh, in, in fruits and in vegetables, in, um, in the legumes, in all the beans. Those are the good carbs, the things that are not processed. Uh, you know, Brown rice, not the white rice. Wheat bread, not the white bread. Anything that's white is processed, bad carbs, bad carbs. We're going to get into more detail uh, uh, in two weeks. Um, and um, so, Anybody out there has got questions, now's the time to post them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, is there... You know, Okay, so somebody's talking to uh, Michelle. She says protein in the urine, diabetic, mm -hmm. uh, low dose blood pressure. So as far as your blood pressure pill, diabetic, you got protein in the urine, you need to be on an ACE or an ARB. You're a type 1 diabetic. Type 1 diabetics, the new drugs, which are go we're going to talk about probably in, in about a month, I'm going to get into all those newer diabetes drugs that have been shown to slow kidney function loss and promote longer lives. They're really good. Not for type 1 diabetics. Uh, but you should be on an ACE or an ARB, Michelle. Uh, and as far as uh, Advil, uh, it's okay once in a while. Tylenol is probably better. Advil is an NSAID. You don't want to take a lot of NSAID. Coconut, creamer, Becky, and NG. Coconut has a lot of the bad trans fats. Um, okay. Uh, there was one okay. about um, cannabis. Let's see where does cannabis cause harm under long-term use? What's your opinion on that? Not to my knowledge. I think that the um, you know cannabis has been thought to be a uh, a drug that got people to go onto harder drugs, but I think the evidence is such that it's your pre-existing uh, tendency to have problems, uh, to be a drug addict. So I don't think there is. Let me answer uh, Ari, 35, uh, GFR 51, creatinine 1.8. <clears throat> Plant-based diet, how long could I last as I get old? 
<clears throat> well, look, you're 35, and this goes for anyone. I mean, you definitely want to take on uh, a good diet, a healthy diet. You definitely want to exercise. And, um, and if you don't have a lot of protein in the urine and you just happen to have a creatinine 1.8, uh, you may not be at high risk of having loss of kidney function. So even though you're 35, you could do well for many, many decades. But like I said, and we talked about it in other uh, talks here, you need the trend of your kidney function number over time, and you need the trend of your protein uh, in the urine over time as the best predictor of where you're going. Um, and I'm glad Candy has kept her mom off dialysis. Thank you. But make sure she's getting close follow-up because, like I said, there's no reason to start for most people early with the number over 10 but you need to be closely followed to make sure that your na your numbers are okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, a, uh, potassium can increase ACE or ARB. Um, I mean, ACE or ARB can increase your potassium. Uh, and if you're having serious high potassium problems, you're probably going to need to cut down the ACE or ARB unless you're a patient that has high protein in the urine and then you need to discuss with your doctor <clears throat> whether it's worth taking a binder of potassium. So that's a complicated situation. Um, and um, let's see. Uh, Lots of good questions in here tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the 3A, Brenda, anyone 3A, um, it's, it's most likely an insignificant uh, kidney number, uh, but you need to keep your eye on it. You need to know how much protein that you've got. Um, uh, I don't know anyone who's, Helen, who's allergic to ACE and ARBs, and you don't have to be on an ACE or an ARB, um, like I said, unless you have a good bit of protein in the urine. And there's a whole range of drugs, and I've never heard of a patient that couldn't take one or the other. And um, as far as protein in the urine, I mean, one of the things that people say is if you have a lot of urine protein, you may have foamy urine, but the best way to diagnose it is just doing a dipstick of the urine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think verapamil is fine, Dawn. Uh, and again, it could be if you do have kidney disease with protein in the urine, my first choice would be uh, an ACE or an ARB uh, and not... Uh, uh, Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker. All right. How about one more? Because then we'll be at the top of the hour. Okay. Um, Any of those catch your eye? Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, and while you're looking, I'm going to bring the link up to your book. Because if you're new, you're you've probably really impressed listening to Dr. Rowe. And his book, Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease, is so easy to understand, full of great, helpful information. You can find it at your local bookstore, which is great to visit those mom and pops and give them a little bit of love by walking through their doors. Or you can find it on Amazon. There's a link, go.dadvicetv.com slash book that will take you directly to it on Amazon. So Pat asked the difference between Mediterranean and Dash. I mean, the DASH diet and the Mediterranean diet are similar. Uh, the DASH diet is a diet that emphasizes low-salt intake. The Mediterranean diet does not emphasize a low-salt intake. There's been some pretty good evidence that decreasing the salt in your diet, and most of the salt that, that we eat in our diet, the sodium, is coming from things other than the salt shaker. And there's been some evidence that uh, decreasing the amount of salt in your diet for the DASH diet can help with your blood pressure, and can help with your kidneys. So that's the main difference between the two. It's the amount of salt. Um, awesome. And, okay, uh, we are actually over okay. our hour. <laughs> so okay. I'm going to cut right. it off there. <laughs> I want right, to thank fine. everyone out there for being here tonight. Thank you, Dr. Rowe, for volunteering sure. your time to come here. Talk about all the fad diets. Talk about the importance of a low-carb diet for those that are diabetic as well as those with kidney disease and the importance of losing weight and exercising. Dr. Rowe will be back in two weeks. We're going to dive into the details or the nuts and bolts, as he calls it, of a low-carb diet. 
And if you guys have any questions, go ahead, post them in the comments. Might get them answered over time. I know Dr. Rowe comes back from time to time to see how the videos are doing. Share the videos. Let's spread the love to more people. Have them find this great content to help them feel better and take control of their lives and their kidney disease. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I'll be back this Friday. There's no show tomorrow night. I've got a, some work that runs late tomorrow. So next Friday, or this Friday, I'll be live again. And then I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, everyone. Thanks and have a great rest of your week. Bye.